Hey guys, Mikosh here. Today I'm going to be talking about the new expansion, Affliction 3.23, which is going to bring a ton of changes, nerfs, and reworks of a lot of aspects of the game. Uh, this expansion, I think, is going to be a very, very, very interesting one. It will make the game feel completely different uh, with the new introduction of the gems, new system reworks, and stuff like that. This video will be kind of analyzing what 3.23 is going to do to bow builds uh, because, you know, we are bow enjoyers. And so specifically, I'm going to be targeting the changes that are affecting Tornado Shot as well as Lightning Arrow and Rain of Arrows, right? Those three, you, those three uh, skills are going to be the ones we're going to use uh, during our league. Rain of Arrow is often going to be our uh, skill, our starting skill to level up. Then we're going to swap to Lightning Arrow and then Tornado Shot will be our end build so i'm going to be talking about all of the effects it's going to have on those three skills and so on this video it's going to be divided in multiple small contents it's going to be the we're going to be talking about the lab enchant changes and gem changes we're going to be talking about unique nerfs the secondary ascendancy and their impact on early mid and late game a, a general view and meta changes i think for tornado shot players and then i'm going to be talking about what's going to come next as guides so now, let's first talk about the lab enchants and gem changes. GGG has decided to completely rework the rewards of labs, making item enchantment, lab enchantments uh, not part of the game anymore. So all the enchantment you had on your gloves, boots, and helmet uh, will not be obtainable. We don't know yet if they're going to be completely wiped, so we don't know in standard if they're going to stay, but we know they're never going to be given anymore uh, in League. Which means, for example, if you look at this heat shiver, the tornado shot fires an additional secondary projectile. That's an enchantment from the lab. Uh, those will not be obtainable anymore. Now, that is quite a big change because, for example, on tornado shot, we know that tornado shot uh, shoots a first primary projectile and then it transforms itself into a tornado shot and shoots three secondary projectile. The fact that we have another one, which means we have a 25% increase in secondary projectile, which is quite huge, especially for uh, clearing. Um, however, GGG has also decided to change the normal quality of gems. Actually, they've completely changed the way quality works. Uh, gem, um, alternate quality, sorry, such as anomalous, divergent, and phantasmal have always uh, have been completely uh, wiped from the game and there will only be one base type of quality. And for tornado shots, it's going to be fires 0 to 1 secondary projectile. At 20% quality, we're going to have an additional secondary projectile, which means uh, for us, the lab enchant mods uh, have actually been replaced by our quality. This actually means what? This means that uh, we don't really feel that much of a difference. We're going to feel a bit of the difference because, you know, we were able to have the lab enchant as well as the quality, but the quality wasn't that much that strong, right? It's not like, uh, for example, Spectral Shield Throw, where the, the Phantasmal quality is very important. Tornado Shot quality is very good, uh, but it's not, you know, build defining or it's not going to make the, the game, the build uh, break or something. Now, for the three gems that are interesting us for Tornado Shot, it's the one additional secondary projectile for Lightning Arrow. At 20%, we hit two additional enemies, which is huge for clear. And then for, for Rain of Arrow at 20% quality, it is four additional projectile. Now, there's also the introduction of something called Transfigured Gems. Uh, Transfigured Gems are the new addition to PoE, which replaces the lab enchant. So you'll be able to obtain Transfigured Gems when you do the Uber Lab, so the last lab. Uh, and instead of getting the enchant on, you know, at the end of the lab on that little machine, it will actually make you transform some of gems into transfigured gems. Now, transfigured gems, as we've seen, will are a completely different way of playing that gem. They completely change the way the gem works. For example, if you look at blink, blinking arrow, um, blink arrow, sorry, when you your clone is actually going to start shooting rain of arrows instead of just normal arrows, which is kind of wild. Uh, there's also um, summon, I think it was summon zombie. Now you make zombie fall from the sky, which die instantly. It's, it, it completely changes the, um, the way the gem functions. 
but the thing is we have no information about lightning arrow or tornado shot so we don't know how we don't know first of all if they're going to be transfigured uh, if the transfigured gem actually exists for lightning arrow or tornado shot and if it does we don't know if it's going to be stronger or not uh, they seem to be a like kind of niche so they're going to be for very specific builds and you need, you need to make your build uh, function around that gem and so for now we can't really compare it to our beloved normal tornado shot we don't know yet if it's going to be better or worse now how does the new lab and new gem actually impact you right so the gem the gem changes make for us for our bow builds uh, it makes the old version um sorry it makes the new versions actually better than the old versions why because getting quality on our gem is a lot easier than getting the specific lab enchant you're able the lab first of all the specific lab enchant is often going to be uber lab which means you can't get it before a certain amount of level and then you either need to be extremely lucky or buy the item itself uh, with the enchant or on top of that uh, pay a specific lab burner for that with the new 3.23 all you need to do is get 20% quality on your gem, which is super, super easy. Now, this is going to impact the worth of the gem cutter, uh, the gem cutter prism, which is the, uh, the currency needed to augment the quality. So you need 20 of those to be able to augment your quality to 20%. They are not so rare of a currency, but now that they have a lot more, they're, they're worth it right because the quality of the gems are a lot more powerful in the early game so maybe mid league and end league they'll end up being like worth as much as now but in the early game they're going to be even more expensive however there are multiple ways of getting them either by drops so they're not that rare or by venering recipes if you sell gems uh, which so if you sell gems with a total of 40 percent quality for example, you sell one gem at 10, the other one at 20, and the other one at 10, so that's a total of 40. It will give you a single gem cutter. Now, gems that drop with quality are very common. It drops all the time. And so if you really need, especially in the early uh, early game, you know, with Lightning Arrow or with Rain of Arrows, where like 5 or 10% quality is already enough to feel the bonus, um, it's actually maybe worth it to pick up all the gems you see with quality. Now, in the extreme late game, compare to before. Before, you were able to get the plus one secondary projectile on your helmet, and then you would use, uh, for example, for me, I was using the cold conversion tornado shot. I would use divergent tornado shot, which at 20% would give me 10% increase attack speed. Now that I'm using the tornado shot with the normal quality, which is a secondary projectile, and I don't have it on my helmet, in the end, uh, I'm actually just losing 10% increased attack speed. So in the early game, it is very, very powerful. You feel the benefits immediately. But for the min-maxing, it ends up being a 10% 10 uh, attack speed loss. That's not a 10% increase DPS. It's not, a, it's not that much. It's probably going to feel like maybe a 1% DPS loss or something. However, it is still a loss in the end-end game. Now, it might be different thanks to the transfigured gems, but we don't know that yet. Unique Nurse, the Heat Shiver. The Heat Shiver is a unique helmet that gives us fire damage depending on the effect of the chill or if we freeze an enemy. Heat Shiver was a broken item, okay? And the nerf was pretty predictable. I was surprised it was able to survive that long. And every league, I would tell myself, it's gonna die, it's gonna die. Against frozen enemies, what it used to do is you would gain 100% of your cold damage as extra fire. If you're a 100% physical to cold conversion build, which this means 100% of your cold damage is 100% uh, of your damage, sorry, is in cold, which means if you gain 100% of that damage as fire, you would effectively double your DPS. Now, however, it has been nerfed from 100% to 30% as extra fire damage. So as I said, Peachiver was probably the most OP item we had in our build. Why? Because it effectively doubled our DPS just by being a helmet. So our helmet was doubling our DPS. It is one of the reasons, well, it's actually the main reason why 
physical to coal conversion was, and by far, the best Trinity shot variant to run. Now, physical to coal conversion was good. Why? Because you were able to scale physical as well as cold, which was you, you take advantage of double increase in damage. But the fact that after that, our whole DPS, so our cold damage, um, was then multiplied by two, you, would a you were able to push DPS at crazy, crazy heights. Now, the new nerf will cap it to 30% and not 100%. And depending on, you know, how much cold you do, that's approximately a 35% drop in your DPS. What that also does is that you are not able to proc Trinity anymore. On a full cold build, you were able to proc Trinity uh, against uh, enemies that did not die on the first hit. Why? Because the first hit would be give cold, so you would proc um, the fire and lightning circle. And then when you would hit the second time against the frozen enemy, you might get a chance of hitting your highest damage being fire because you'd gain 100% of that cold as fire, which means you would have a fully proc'd trinity at all times. Now with the nerf of heat shiver, you are not able to proc trinity with physical to cold conversion. Well, not fully. Now, heat shiver is still the best in slot item for cold conversion build, right? Because it literally just gives you a 30% more DPS instead of a 100% more DPS. It bests Black Sun Crest by a mile in endgame builds. However, for early and low budget builds, um, Heat Shiver will still remain better for damage. However, because it used to be completely OP, uh, the best priority was to be able to get enough omniscience and resistance elsewhere to be able to use Heat Shiver because it would double our DPS. But now that it only uh, makes our DPS go up by 30%, Black Sun Crest might see more game time. So in the end, you will go to Heat Shiver, but you might use Black Sun Crest for a longer period of time before it's actually worth it to switch to Heat Shiver. Now, as well, the nerf of Heat Shiver uh, might mark a possible meta change, making Triple Elemental Tornado Shot a lot more popular than before. This will be discussed a bit later on in the video. Now, what's really, really um, going to impact... Uh, is when you're it's the ability of tornado shot to do uber bosses at high-end budgets uh tornado shot will still have absolutely no problem killing uber bosses uh lightning fast however for the average player the 35 percent damage loss will be felt uh, when you're facing a stronger and tankier opponent the fact that you were doubling your dps would make pretty much any ever like all builds feel very very good um, as we know Tornado Shot is a mapping skill, but it is so strong with the fact that it's able to shotgun the ability and all the secondary projectile, you could literally use it for bossing. But now it will be a bit harder and you will need a higher entry cost to do, you know, very, very hard uber content. Another content that will feel worse will be 100% Delirious. They will definitely feel uh, worse. Uh, obviously, the 80% also is going to feel worse, but the 100% is really where it's really, you can't really one shot anything. And Trinity was, uh, not Trinity, sorry, Heat Shiver was really powerful. And then you would always have Trinity on. Um, but now that Heat Shiver has been nerfed by quite a bit, you will feel a difference in the 100% Delirious map, even if you're on a high budget. For normal mapping, however, I don't think it's going to be much of an impact, especially at the entry cost of when you're switching to physical to cold conversion. You're going to have Omniscience already, and you're going to have, you know, enough to make it feel good. So for normal mapping, the Heat Shiver nerf will not be felt, uh, I think, whatsoever. Now, the second unique item that has been nerfed and that will directly impact uh, us bow builds is the Kaom Spirit Titan Gauntlet. Kaom Spirit um, actually used to give you rage per amount of life recovery you had. Before, it was one rage per second for every 100% life recovery per second. Now, however, it's regenerate run rage for every 300. This means it is three times harder to have the same rage generation. Now, Kaom's nerf is going to be a very, very big hit, especially for lower end, mid end, and League Start builds. Uh, why? Because Kaom Spirit was actually used to, to incorporate Berserk. And Berserk is pretty much the most OP buff in this game what it does is it gives you a whopping 20 percent more damage 20 percent more attack speed and 30 percent more movement speed 
Now that's basically your DPS times 1.44. So for example, you did 1 million DPS, you now do 1.1,440,000 1, and your movement speed goes up by 30% more, which means if you have 100% increased movement speed, you do 130. But if you have 200% movement speed, you don't do 230. No, you do 260% more uh, movement speed because it's 30% more. So it's an additional 30%. But now that it requires 300 life and not 100 life to generate one rage, Kaelm would actually require way too much resources and sacrifices to make Berserk actually feel good. And I think at this point it will be detrimental to use Kaelm Spirit to be able to proc Berserk than actually just using normal gloves. Because you actually need to sacrifice multiple mods, right, to be able to have enough life regen. Now, Vol's Visions... And, you know, the other unique items that were used, I know uh, some, I forgot their name, but the the rings that give you life regen depending on your level, uh, they're obviously not going to feel, they're, they're not going to be as used, basically, and because they won't see as much gameplay because Kiln Spirit by itself has been nerfed. Now, the impact for cold conversion builds, um, cold conversion builds actually used uh, conversion gloves, right, which helped us convert... 60% of physical damage into Kolb. And high-end Cold Conversion build actually used multi-link gloves, which means not a lot of physical to Cold Conversion builds actually use Kaom. It is still possible, and it was very, very strong, especially if you wanted to zoom through maps. However, this nerf, not many Cold Conversion players will actually feel a difference because they're still going to use the same Gain 1 Rage on Hate Glove Implicit, uh, which is... Not, which didn't change. So you don't have Berserk uptime all the time, but because we are used to not having Berserk all the time, we won't feel a difference. On the other side, however, the triple elemental builds will take a hit because they didn't need the full conversion, which meant that their gloves weren't needed for a specific thing, and they would often use as gloves Kaom Spirit. That would greatly boost their DPS as well as clear speed, but now that they don't have Kaom Spirit, they were going to have to find an alternative such as the um, Rampage Gloves, which are still not as strong as Kiln Spirit. Now, another bow build that will take a hit from uh, this nerf is actually going to be MF builds. As we know, to be a Magic Finder in League, you're going to need to use specific uniques, right, which are often generic and actually very, very bad. Now, Berserk, what it did is it helped a lot of Magic Find builds, especially on the lower end and mid end, to boost their DPS and boost their clear speed by being faster, shooting faster, right? Uh, and we know that Magic Finder, they need, to, they need to be fast, they need to be strong, because it's directly connected to their Divine per hour rate. But now that Berserk is gone, their clear speed is way lower, which means that their Divine per hour is actually going to be lower, sadly. So it will prove to be... It will be more difficult to get into a Magic Find on a lower budget, and it will also be not as worth it as before. Now let's talk about Will Wildwood Ascendancies. GGG will now introduce three new Ascendancy classes, which will be obtainable and used at the same time as your basic Ascendancy. So you basically have another Ascendancy, and they seem to be completely broken. Uh, you will be introduced to them as early as Act 2. Uh, that's what they said during the reveal, which means you will be... They will follow you during your Acts, right? And will probably complete it once you enter endgame or nearly completed. Now, out of the three ascendancies that were presented, there are two of them that will stand out as contenders for the best uh, for us bow builds. It's going to be Warden of the Magi or Magi, and the Wildwood Primalist or Primalist. I don't know how to say that. So let's first talk about the Warden of the Magi. This new ascendancy is very exciting. And it contains many passives that could make us a ton stronger, especially in the early game, as it's going to introduce tinctures uh, and other flask benefits. And I'm 100% sure that tinctures, maybe not in bull builds, but they will be completely OP and completely meta-defining. So what is a tincture? A tincture is an item that is obtainable from the infliction, affliction encounters, right? So you can't drop in a normal map, you need to do the affliction encounter. And it will be equipped uh, as a flask, right? So it's not a flask, but it is equipable in a flask slot, and it is toggled to enhance a character's weapon with special bonus. What's important to note is it is toggled, which means it is always up. 
However, to be able to use them, you need to be a Warden of the Magi because you need something called Coated Blade. Can apply tinctures to your equipped weapon. So this is 100% needed to be able to use tinctures. Without Warden of the Magi, you do not use tinctures. Now, tinctures are stupid strong. They will give bonuses to your weapon, which seems to mean it only affects attacks, first of all. Uh, but thankfully for us, bow builds are attacks, which means we will very, very likely be able to use tinctures. Um, we do not have all the... We don't have the list of all the tinctures that are available, uh, but they seem to follow a certain logic. And that logic is there is the base tincture, uh, which will always give you the same mod. For example, um, one of the tincture gives you Calling Strike. And then it also can have two modifiers, one which will probably an explicit, uh, implicit, no, sorry, one which will probably a prefix and the second one being an, uh, a suffix. Now, what it seems uh, is that the implicit is actually tied to the base of the tincture, while the two uh, modifiers, so the explicit, so the um, suffix and prefix, will actually be just randomly generated. Kind of just like flask. A quicksilver flask will always have 40% movement speed, but its explicits will change. However, for the tinctures, the explicits are actually unmodifiable, which means you cannot craft or roll them, which means um, certain mods will be like, you know, rare or combinations of mods are going to be rare and going to be more sought after, which means uh, the, if the base is right, as well as the two modifiers, they can be, they can be selling for a lot. That could be maybe a new currency making method. Uh, and so for people who like affliction, right, they can run a lot of affliction to be able to make currency. Yeah, but this also means that for very, very, you can maybe go very, very high end with them. Um, yeah. Now, wait, to go back to, first of all, the tinctures, just look at the implicits. One of them gives you Calling Strike. Calling Strike, what it does is it instantly kills an enemy the moment he is 10 HP or lower and that you deal um, a damage, right? So example, if an enemy has a billion HP, he's at 10% HP. So right now he is at uh, 100 million HP and you deal just one damage. The moment you deal one damage to him, he instantly dies. And that is very, very OP. Now, another one is damaging hits always stun enemies on full life. Now that might, for us, that's not really strong, but you know, it can still be strong depending on what type of build. So I think that tinctures are going to be very OP. As well, the explicits also are very strong. For example, uh, killing blows against ranger monsters have a 12% chance to grant one of their modifiers for 60 seconds. And that's kind of like a budget version of or um, a headhunter, or even more of a budget version of uh, Inspired Learning, but it is still quite strong. Another one is inflict four withered debuffs for two seconds on the enemies that are on full life. For example, if you're on a, you know, you're a chaos build and you're doing bosses, well, four instant withered debuffs the moment you you hit the enemy is very, very powerful. So I think tinctures by themselves are going to be very powerful. Now, not only that the tinctures themselves are seemingly OP, paired with the rest of the ascendancy points of the Wording of the Magi, they go from strong to possibly meta-defining. So let me introduce you to Nature's Concoction, which is another passive ascendancy passive from the Wildwood Ascendancy. It reads by that, Flask adjacent to apply tinctures gain three charges when you hit an enemy with a weapon, no more than once per second. Flask adjacent to applied tinctures have a 30% uh, increased effect when used if you've hit an enemy with a weapon recently. Now, that is nutty. Just this passive point actually combines two of the Pathfinder Ascendancy, which is gain, Flask gain three charges every three seconds, and Nature's Bloom, which gives uh, Magic Utility Flask a 30% increased effect. Now, you can literally have permanent flask uptime even against bosses without being a pathfinder uh, as well as having a 30% increased flask effect. Why? Because you gain three charges every time you hit an enemy every one second, which means in three seconds, 
you basically have plus nine charges. And that also scales with, uh, you know, uh, flask gain and stuff. That is wild because Pathfinder by himself, by herself, gains three charges every three seconds. So it's literally better. Now, obviously the gain three charges is without hitting anything. It's all the time, but still when you're mapping or shooting thing, you're always going to have your flask. And on top of that, they have a 30% increased effect. What's really important to note that is only set, it only says flasks, which means not only magic or not only utility flask have that buff. Now, you could then be able to um, scale the flask effect of unique flask or even scale your magic utility flask even higher. Now, we don't know yet, but if there is a flask that is sandwiched in between uh, two uh, tinctures, we don't know if the 30% are going to be applied twice or if it's only 30% in total. Uh, but still, that, that is still a huge buff. Now, all builds that aren't Pathfinder, so example, us Dead Eyes, will gain a ton from our flask, right? Which means Mage Blood might not be as important as any, uh, anymore. Because we knew Mage Blood was very OP, right? Because it gives us a ton of attack speed, a ton of damage, crit, stuff like that. However, now that we have Nature's Concoction, we basically have uh, Flask Uptime 100%. We have Flask Increased Effect when we're bossing and mapping. So that players who never reach Mage Blood tier or that take a long, long time to get there, they won't feel, their build won't feel bad for long. Why? Because they can literally replace that with the Nature's Concoction, just like pretty much any Pathfinder build does. Right? Uh, this also makes you maybe able to use the prefix increased effect, reduced duration on your flask right here. Uh, the problem with this is that your flask were very, very short. But now that we have a lot of charges that we gain with hits, we might be actually able to put that into our build, making us a lot stronger without having to use Mage Blood. Now, the wording of the Magi will make the flask, as I said, completely broken. And as we know, flasks are very strong, right? The rework of Pathfinder made it one of the most, if not the most, OP ascendancy in the game. You see it a lot in hardcore. A lot of players use Pathfinder because of its crazy survivability. Now, obviously, we won't go, we won't reach that point as a Deadeye. But if you think about it, um, we can still use it on our flask and make it completely OP. For example, Progenesis. Progenesis, it's the 25% damage uh, that you take only on dot for four seconds. Well, it's now up to 33.5%. So that means a third of your damage won't, won't be, like you won't get a third of your damage uh, and it will be separated in four seconds instead of a quarter. So that's a lot. Oriath End, which gives you the chance to explode, it usually it was 20 to 30 percent now it's going to be 26 to 39 percent so imagine one like pretty much more than a third of the enemies you're going to kill are going to explode if you use for example taste of hate which gives you 10 to 15 percent uh, extra physical as extra cold and 10 to 15 percent physical damage taken as cold it is now up to 13 to 19.5 so on max roll it's literally a fifth right and that's a lot However, don't forget, it can also scale with Utility Flask. For example, Quicksilver will now, instead of giving 40% increased movement speed, it will give you 52% more movements, increased movement speed. Silver Flask, which gives you Onslaught, will also scale. And don't forget, silver the Onslaught that you gain from Silver Flask scales with Flask Effect, which means it's 30% increased effect of Onslaught. And Onslaught gives you 20% increased attack speed and 20% increased movement speed, which is quite a lot. Find the example, the Diamond Flask, which gives you increased uh, critical strike chance to 100%, right? It's 100% increased critical strike chance. It's now going to give you 130% increased critical strike chance. This is completely OP. And it also scales uh, for Mage Blood. So endgame builds could actually use tinctures to make the flask they use with Mage Blood even better. Because we know Mage Blood scales uh, only does its buff to 4 utility flask. So you could use four utility flask and one uh, tincture and have basically 30% increased effect on two of your chosen flask, which is completely OP. However, 
the introduction of another ascendancy class might actually be more beneficial once you reach the end game. So, you know, the mage blood tier. And that uh, is the Wildwood Primalist. The Wildwood Primalist, to be short, is probably the most OP thing uh, possible, especially for late high end builds and for us bow builds as well. So, what is it? It's basically a black slate and it lets you personalize and choose your ascendancy point by using charms. What are charms? Charms are unmodifiable items that have random ascendancy skills from any ascendancy. So you might have a charm that has a inquisitor ascendancy, or you might have a charm that has a berserk ascendancy. It has a total of two modifiers as we've seen. So it's basically, it could be, a, we don't know if it's going to be a combination of two different ascendancy or it could be, uh, or it can actually be a charm with two of the same ascendancy. We don't know that yet, but we do know uh, that you can have up to two ascendancy. Now those ascendancy mods, right, uh, are actually kind of like nerfed versions. So for example, if you read the um, cursed enemies, you or your minion kills have a 14% chance to explode, dealing a quarter of their maximum life as chaos damage. If you look at the, um, I forgot the name, the uh, occultist uh, ascendancy, you're going to see that the occultist uh, has the same mod, but a bit stronger. However, if you're not an occultist, but you want to have that explode, you can actually use that charm to have explode into your ascendancy. So it is very, very strong because you can use combinations that were never possible before. What it is basically is it's forbidden jewels, right? So forbidden flame and forbidden flesh, a bit nerfed, but unlimited, and you can choose whichever ascendancy you want. Just like the tinctures though, those items are completely unmodifiable. So very OP combinations will probably fetch for a huge price. That's why I think this uh, ascendancy will be the best one when you're going for the min max and it could be huge. Now just think about what if you had three of those slots with three charms that have, uh, for example, dead eye ascendancy, maybe a plus one arrow, plus one arrow, plus one arrow. So you have plus three arrows or maybe uh, tail one effect, or it could be avatar of slaughter, avatar of chase, you know, for your raider ascendancy, you can go for berserk with um, the berserk ascendancy. There's, there's so many ascendancies that could be very strong outside of the bow ascendancies uh, that you could incorporate for your tornado shot or for your lightning arrow. So I think wildwood primalist is going to be uh, the ascendancy to go for once you reach end game. Now, all of that is going to modify how we play Tornado Shot. And we're going to have to change the expectations of what a normal, uh, you know, league is for a bow builder. For league start, I think that bow builds have become a lot stronger. They were already strong as a league start, but right now with the new ascendancies, with the new uh, quality and with the new, um, yeah, with the new gems, I, I think it's going to be completely OP. Uh, you will have access to an actual lab enchant by simply having quality on your gems. Reign of Arrow is going to be a lot stronger because it has more arrows. Lightning Arrow, me this means actually that you can go to Lightning Arrow uh, a lot quicker, right? Because they're able to target more enemies, you can swamp even before ending um, the axe. And I think it will be actually a good idea to swap to Lightning Arrow actually at Act 6, right? And that's also thanks to the new quality. This also, need, this also means that you don't need to level a raider if you prefer speed. Now, if you prefer being tanky, tanking your time, it is better to level up as a raider and then switch to a deadeye. But if you want to go fast, go completely deadeye, zoom through because, you have, cause, because you're able to swap to lightning arrow um, before the end of the axe instead of at the end of the axe or, you know, tier yellow. This also means you're able to swap to tornado shot uh, a lot earlier, right? Because it has one secondary additional secondary projectile which means the clear is going to be a lot better it also scales for example with uh, additional arrows right so if you have more arrows um, extra arrows doesn't give you extra secondary projectile but the more primary projectiles you're going to have obviously you're going to have more secondary projectile in your screen which means that your clear is going to feel a lot better especially early on the wildwood ascendancy uh, which are introduced in the axe will also make the progression feel a lot easier 
especially thanks to you know the tic uh, tinctures and stuff you're gonna have a huge advantage early on now for low and mid budget bills, you know, you reach yellow, you reach red maps, are you on a lower budget, the economy is just starting to develop, or you know, you don't have a lot of time to play in the game, and you often go you, like, maybe a few divines, uh, what it's going to impact for you? Well, first of all, you don't need the lab enchant, right? For tornado shot, we know that the additional secondary projectile has it's always I think it's been uh, for a while now, the most expensive uh, lab enchant now i don't want to like don't take my word for it but i know it's a very very expensive enchant to get why because it's rare and uh, lab runners well they charge extra for that because it's more popular and it's rare now you will actually not be able you will uh, you will actually not have to spend that much all you need is to quality your gem to level tw uh, to 20 percent and then boom you have a lab enchant so first of all that's going to feel great now on top, the warding of the Magi Ascendancy will make low and mid budget feel a lot better. Why? Because you're not pressured to use Mage, Mage Blood. As we know, Mage Blood is super strong. But with Warding of Magi, you have 100% Flask uptime basically. And you have Flask Effect, as well as having the bonuses of Tinctures. This means low and mid budget will have kind of like a budget version of Mage Blood. And they will feel a lot better thanks to it. Now the cost of tincturns remain to be seen, uh, but will sure make like they will for sure be very expensive. I think uh, for certain combinations, but I still think that on low and mid budget, uh, they will actually be very very beneficial for your build. However, the nerf of the Kaom Spirit will be felt actually greatly uh, because you know you don't have Berserk anymore, so you can't go as fast. You won't be zooming as much. I think that's going to be what's going to end up being. You don't zoom as much. But hopefully, the new tinctures can actually overpower the loss of Berserk. Although, in my opinion, I don't think it's actually going to be the case. But they will make the hit not as strong, basically. So, yeah. Now, high-end budgets. For the high-end budgets, let's be sh it's going to be short. Uh, the power level will drop. Uh, heat Shiver has been nerfed, and that's basically a 35% DPS drop. I did some testing on my 3.22 build that I made. I was able to reach a whopping 4.5 billion DPS. Uh, but now that it has been nerfed, I put a new heat shiver, right? With the 30% increase, 30% uh, more instead of the 100. And my DPS went to 3 billion. So that's literally a third of my DPS that is gone. Now, is 3 billion DPS good? Uh, absolutely. I insta kill pretty much anything. Uh, even uber bosses they, they they don't even stand in front of me for more than like two three seconds however i think for high end uh, when i mean high end i mean like maybe you have a mage blood or maybe you know you have maybe like a a bit like a couple of hundreds of divs you will actually feel a big difference on that uh, any high end build will feel a difference now higher 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 end you know like multi mirror builds you won't feel a difference because nothing can survive anyways but just normal high-end budget builds, you will feel a difference. For high-end triple elemental builds, you will feel a difference as well because of the nerf of Kaom Spirit. And I think that the tinctures are not actually going to be strong enough to overpower the loss of Berserk. Uh, but that remains to be seen, especially with the Transfigured Gems. Uh, so the content you will feel the most difference is going to be 100% Delirium. Uh, and uber bosses uh, for general mapping i don't think there's gonna be any difference because it's already overkill uh, the moment you pass 3 million dps per arrow you, there's nothing really standing in your way unless obviously you're going for 100 percent delhi or uber bosses now the meta changes in bow builds cold or triple elemental heat shiver nerf uh, doesn't only just impact the dps like it does impact the dps but it's also going to push a lot of players away from cold conversion. Now, don't get me wrong. Heat Shiver is still completely OP. It is still completely broken for a helmet to be able to actually give you 30% more DPS. But the fact that it's not 100% more DPS, it will actually push away players. Why? Well, because cold conversion builds is a higher entry cost. When you're going to make a cold conversion build, you're actually going to start as a triple elemental with Trinity. You're going to scale, you're going to save up a bit, you're going to go omniscience, then you're going to save up a bit more, 
and then you're going to do the swap to physical right because physical bows are more expensive they're harder to roll you need the specific conversion right because if you're not 100 conversion it's kind of useless so you need specific things however uh, it was worth it. Why? Because the moment you went to cold, your DPS was immediately doubled, basically. Uh, but now that your DPS is only going by a 30% increase, it might actually be some players will actually try to invest more into their triple elemental to make it stronger instead of investing a lot to go to uh, physical to cold conversion. So that will affect the popularity i think of triple elemental builds which i think is cool right we always need changes in our in, in path of exile the goal is not to always run the same type of build so for players that were you know in the maybe 200 300 div budget it might actually be a better idea nowadays to actually just go for the triple elemental instead of going to physical to cold conversion now if you know you're going to go to the mirror tier no questions asked physical to cold conversion is still going to be stronger it was stronger than triple elemental even before the introduction of heat shiver and it is probably in my opinion going to be the king of tornado shots um, until they completely kill physical to cold conversion now so as i said if you remain on a tight budget stick to triple elemental uh right but if you know you want you're gonna scale your build and if you want the best build possible going conversion is going to be better because the 30% more DPS is still a lot stronger. And the fact that you're able to scale physical damage as well as cold uh, damage, and then having the bonus of hatred, uh, it's not beatable by a flat elemental damage. Now that is my little rant on the 3.23. Hopefully you understood a lot more. And the fact that 3.23 changes the meta a lot, this means I'm going to remake some of my guides. I will be reworking completely the tornado shot leveling, uh, like 100% uh, rework. There is going to be new guides on the physical to cold conversion with the introduction of new ascendancy classes. You can't miss that. I, I can't like, I cannot make no guides on that because it's com it's going to change the way you're going to play the build. Uh, there's going to be new guides on the triple elemental builds. So for the those who wish to have guides on non physical to con conversion builds, I will be making those because now they will be more popular and they won't be like obviously physical to cold is going to be better but it won't be that much of a difference which means triple elemental will actually be a pretty competitive contender on the side however i am currently working on a general crafting guide project and the general crafting guide will basically be a long 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 video that you sit you watch the whole video and i will try to cover pretty much everything about crafting it won't be an in-depth guide because in-depth guide on crafting would probably require a video of 10 hours extra, but uh, I will be touching every single, well, I will try to touch every single crafting uh, in the game. We will be analyzing how to make, you know, small items and we will be analyzing, for example, mirror tier items. So I will be talking about the whole process of making completely broken items, uh, whether it's in standard or um, in league, everything. It will then be followed by a tornado shot crafting guide. I will make a guide on how to craft every single piece of gear of every single budget for physical and triple elemental. So all the bows, how to make them, how to make the gloves, how to make the chest, how to make everything, how to make the clusters, every everything about tornado shot, I will be talking about it. On the side as well, I am making a general magic finding guide that is not related to tornado shot. So if you want to do magic find, it's just going to be an introduction to everything to know about magic find. As I said, it's not going to be in depth. It's just going to touch everything about magic find. I will, however, make as well a tornado shot magic find general guide. I was kind of waiting on the nerf of Kaom Spirit because I knew like Berserk would get nerfed. That's why I didn't want to make an MF build in League because MF builds use Kaom Spirit. But now that it has been nerfed, uh, I don't think any magic find player will actually run Kaom Spirit. And then I will be making an accuracy stack in tornado shot. Uh, with the new ascendancies and stuff, uh, it remains to be seen what's going to be the best. Uh, but it seems like accuracy stack in tornado shot has always has been actually buffed uh, thanks to the new um, the new wildwood ascendancy. I think accuracy stacking is going to be completely broken. So yeah, that's the end of the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and learned a lot. And if you have any questions, uh, you can let me know in the comments down below or join the um, Discord server where a 5,300 people so if you have any questions or you know you wish to talk to chill uh play together um, you know do grow up stuff you can join the discord it's a lot of fun very active especially during league 
Um, yeah. So most importantly, guys, have fun and see you next time.